model exponentially with logs. <laughs> Logarithms, love them. All right, so properties to recall that we're going to use here. The first one is the one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. So just remember, we said that if we have b to the m equals b to the n, then we know that m equals n. I like to think that the one-to-one -one properties are like the common sense ones. Like, that makes sense. The definition of logarithms. That's where we have if b to the y equals x, then y equals the log of x base b, right? How do we change from an exponential to a logarithm and a logarithm to an exponential? We go back and forth using the definition. The one-to-one -one property of logarithm is similar to the one-to-one -one property of exponentials, and that's if we have the log of m base b, and that equals the log of n base b, then m equals n. Again, kind of a, a common sense thing like, hey, the bases are the same, just like up here. Then we know that m equals n. And then the last one is an identity problem. I just didn't put that in there. But if we have the log of b to the x base b, then that equals x, right? Because this piece right here is just 1. So just recall that. We're going we're gonna to use that. Okay, let's jump in. Scientists are working on a new antibiotic. They have bacteria growing at a continuous rate modeled by the equation below where T is in hours. They can't perform the next step until the number of bacteria reach 1,000. How many hours do they need to wait? Round up to the next whole hour. Okay, so here is where we're saying we need the bacteria to be 1,000, right? We need the final amount. That's the amount. We need this to be 1,000. So what is our value of t? So we need to solve this exponential model. Well, remember, when we're solving exponential models, we first have to isolate the exponential piece that has that variable. So our first step here is to divide both sides by 150, because that will give me e to the 0.04t. Now, if you put this in your calculator, you're going to get um, an ugly repeating decimal. So I'm just going to reduce it to a fraction because um, they're both reducible by 50. So I'm going to do that. If you're going to um, put, you know, use a decimal in your calculator, that's fine. Don't do it yet. Just leave it as a fraction and deal with it later. Okay. So now we're looking at this and we say, okay, how do I get rid of the exponent? How do I do this? Well, the opposite of exponential is logarithmic. So when you have a variable in the exponent, we need to add a log to both sides, right? We need to um, basically just do a log. And because the base is e, what type of logarithm has a base e? The natural log. So we want to do a natural log to both sides. So the natural log of 20 over 3 equals the natural log of e to the point 0, 4 t. Run out of space here. Now we know by that identity property that the natural log of E will just kind of disappear by the properties and we're left with 0 0.04t equals the natural log of 20 over 3. Now our final step to isolate T is to divide both sides by 0 0.04. Okay, so that isolates T. So T equals the natural log of 20 over 3 divided by 0 0.04 in your calculator. You need to do, type in the natural log, parentheses, 20, divided by 3, end parentheses, and then divide by 0 0.04. If you do that, you should get your answer of 47.42. Rounding up to the next whole hour, we end up with 48 hours. If they need, right, this is where we think about, like, what does this problem mean? If they need 1,000 bacteria, if we round down to 47 hours, they're going to be short. They're not going to have 1,000. So you have to make sure you understand the context of these like real life story problems because that's going to change. You don't always round to the closest two. You might have to round in this case up to make sure we have the appropriate number of, of bacteria to do what we need to do. Okay, let's do one more. Plutonium is a radioactive metal that is used as a fuel in nuclear reactors. Plutonium has a half-life of 24,100 years. That half-life means it's the amount of time for half of the plutonium to decay. So we want to find the constant rate of decay, which is the K in this formula, for plutonium. Round to six decimal places and use the decay formula. 
And you might be thinking, I, I don't have enough information. The only thing I know is the half-life, and that's 24,100 years. Yeah, you have plenty. Okay, so let's think through this. We don't know um, how much we have, but we don't really need to because we're trying to find the constant of decay, right? We want to find this value here. So if you think about this, when you are solving an equation, if you have one missing piece, but you know everything else, then you can find that. So we know that E is a constant. That's not an issue. But I have to have a value for T, A sub 0, and A sub T. So remember that A sub T is the amount after a certain period, right? After a certain time period. And A sub 0 is the starting amount. So what do we know? We know that the half-life, the time is 24,100 years. Now, half-life means whatever I started with, half of it is left after that. Well, that's great. So if I start with one, that means after 24,100 years, I have half of it left. So it doesn't matter that I... And if you don't like dealing with a decimal, great. Start with 2 and have a sub t be 1. Start with 20 and have a sub t be 10. It doesn't matter. You will get the same answer because you are dealing with half, right? It's half-life. If I start with 1 after 24,100 years, half of that remains. Now that I have numbers, I can plug them in and let's solve. So my amount after 24,100 years is 0.5 equals my initial amount times E raised to the I don't know K power times 24,100. Okay, so I know that a one in front of anything is not really anything, so let's just get rid of that one. And now I have an isolated exponential, so I am ready to apply a log to both sides. Again, my base is E, so that's going to be a natural log. So the natural log of 0.5 equals the natural log of E raised, I'm just going to put the number first, 24,100 K. By our identity property, the right side is just equal to 24,100 K because the natural log of E is just 1, and I have the natural log of 0.5. So to isolate K, my final step is going to be to divide both sides by 24,100. So in my calculator, I'm going to take the natural log of 0.5, put that 0.5 in parentheses, and I'm going to divide by 24,100. That will give me my value for K. And when I do that, I end up with negative 0.00002876, rounded to six decimal places, one, two, three, four, ooh, five, six. Seven tells me to round up. So, 2, 9. And here's the thing. I know this is decaying. So, therefore, I know my decay rate must be negative. So, if I had done all of this work and I had gotten a positive number, I would know that I was wrong. All right, so you just make sure that you're paying attention to what you're doing. And that's playing with plutonium.